Today is that time of year again where I hit the road for an exciting adventure. Join me on this long trip. I'm gonna be gone for about three or four weeks. We're heading out to Colorado, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico. So let's jump into the ride and see where this adventure takes us. Well guys, zero miles to empty and we just got here. Nice. After five and a half hours of driving, two tanks of gas, nearly ran out on the first tank. We are here in Illinois, first night ever camping in Illinois as Illinois residents. These couple first days are just gonna be long haul driving, if you will, just to gain some ground to get to our ultimate destination. Wilson State Park in Kansas. So we skipped Missouri. Sorry, Missouri. Maybe on the way back we'll, we'll get to you. There must be, I don't know, <laughs> close to six, 700 campsites at this uh, place. There's nobody here. <laughs> like, it's right on the water. I'll get some drone footage in the morning. Unfortunately, the last gas station I got to, there was no firewood. There's no firewood here. And this would be a nice place to super drink and have a fire. So anyways, if I find some firewood, I'm gonna catch up with you guys at the fire. If not, enjoy the drone footage and I'll see you tomorrow. Well guys, it's morning here. Hope you enjoyed that drone footage. Right now I'm gonna enjoy the view and some coffee with Bashi. So here's my new coffee I've got, Gearhead Coffee. I've been trying this out for a while. Now, sell this on my store. And every dollar you spend getting coffee gets you three entries to win some tools. But guys, I will check in with you either on the road if anything exciting happens, or hopefully at our final destination. Well guys, that was a hell of a long drive today, but we're here in Colorado by the great sand dunes on a mountain by there. So I'm out of breath, apart from being out of shape, it's 9,000 feet. Last night we're at 3,000. Here's our spot. This campsite has a ton of great reviews, but uh, my transmission was one degree from overheating because it is all dirt for five miles but it is like a, <laughs> it's an incline anyways guys hopefully tomorrow i'll have some adventure videos for you guys the great sand dunes is going to be great there's some trails driving trails i want to go on and yeah alrighty guys well thanks for making it this far into the video a couple of things i want to address in that previous section Firstly, when I travel, I have a destination in mind and between me leaving and the destination could be 2000 miles, could be 100 miles. But when it is long, I do not choose my overnight stops. Now, the reason for this is purely because I don't know how long my kids were lost in the car or how much traffic uh, we will hit. So what I do is I just have that end goal in mind. Now, when I know I'm about 100 to 150 miles away from stopping, I use some apps to find a place to stay overnight. And the three apps I use is firstly, The Dirt, Campendium, and All Stays. Now I can get about three to four days of waste in my tanks before I need a dump. So I can simply use those apps to filter through if I need a dump station or not. And that rarely helps me. Now, another thing to consider is in the Midwest, or at least 500 miles 
from Chicago, there's no really free camping unless you want to camp at Walmart or Cracker Barrel. So I do have to stay at campsites along the way to find BLM land or free camping locations. So you can also use those apps to filter out free camping or cheaper camping. And obviously the less amenities, the less price for the most part. I don't use any amenities other than the dump station and water when I go to campsites. Even if there's electric, I tend not to plug in because I want to be uh, cognizant of my energy usage. Now let's address my gas consumption and how I almost ran out of gas. When I'm not towing with the expedition, I get about 300 to 350 miles per tank. But when you tow and you know I carry a lot of water, I'm at about 6,000, 6,500 pounds fully loaded with the camper. The computer in the expedition has to catch up with that consumption and it's an extreme rate increase of consumption. So when it says you have 300 miles when you start driving, that quickly decreases and gets all the way down to, depending on where I'm driving, about 120 miles per tank. Yes, I get anywhere from five and a half to six and a half miles per gallon, which is terrible, but that's what you get with these 3.5 liter EcoBoosts. So always keep that in mind. We know the fuel consumption is increased when towing but it does take two to three tanks for your computer to catch up with this increase of consumption now moving on to the transmission getting one degree from overheating now that was for many different reasons firstly the stretch of road I was at was at a seven degree incline over four miles and it was a dirt road so I was in four by four low now the next reason for me is that winch on the front actually restricts some airflow to the transmission cooler which it hasn't really been a problem unless I'm doing crazy extreme stuff like this. And now the third reason is you are towing, so just keep in mind that's what the gauges are there for. Make sure you keep an eye on all your gauges, including fuel, and make sure everything is running right. One thing I do recommend you do is I carry an OBD2 port reader in case I do run into an engine code or a check engine light on my expedition. Now the reason for this is twofold. Firstly, sometimes sensors do go off that put your car in limp mode by mistake. You are off-roading, you are doing crazy things. So that way I would be able to look at the code assess if it is actually a problem or it's just a glitch like an O2 sensor that went bad that way you can clear it and not disrupt your whole travel by spending a large portion of your day sitting in the dealer parking lot waiting for the service and the second reason is the obvious if something does go wrong you can self-diagnose it and hopefully you can fix it by yourself or you can at least tell a dealership what is the problem and then you can see if they have the parts to fix it now guys as you saw there was three different campsites in this section of the video and I'll tell you for the most part I was the only one and maybe two or three other people at some of the other campsites throughout the whole trip and that is the sole reason I off-season camp it is great seeing things without the hustle and bustle of crowds in the summer months so that's a tip for you if you're looking to avoid the crowds off-season camp it is perfect now let's get back to the video well good morning we are at Zap, Z Zapata Creek Falls campground, 9,000 feet up. And behind me is the Great Sand Dunes. We're gonna go exploring the Great Sand Dunes today. We couldn't see which site would work best for us. But right now I'm at 72% solar and getting zero sun. Hopefully the sun will come up and then we'll get sun most of the day, but this spot would actually be perfect. I'm um, not too worried. We used about 25% of power last night. Got down to 24 degrees with a field psych of 16. Anyways, I will take you along on our ventures today. This is where we're staying. Zapata Creek Falls. There's a lot of trails around here. Highly rated campground. So hopefully spending two days here we'll get our fix. And then on to the next destination. Alrighty guys, looks like the sun should be fine for charging us up. I just released a video about this little device called the uh, Speedflate. So if you know, I run 65, 70 PSI in the rear when I'm towing and 55, 60 in the front. I'm right now, I'm airing down because we're gonna go drive in this sand. I also aired down last night before we drove up this road on both the camper and the 
car. But right now, if you join these two tires, they're gonna equalize. Now I'm gonna go down to 33. So it's gonna drain these at the same time, which makes life easier. You can get this to drain four at the same time, but I decided to get two because I do do tires at different PSIs. Cool thing is when I come to pumping the tires up, I can hook two up as well to my compressor and use the same speed plate just connected here and then we'll pump two tires up at once. Woo, perfect timing. Alrighty, so we are at the four by four high clearance only trail of the great sand dunes. And uh, I must say they're pretty great. <laughs> I don't think I will make it anywhere near. There's this, that's the size for me. That's still probably high. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna walk around, let the dog run around, experience it. That's gonna be the end of the adventure today. I'll tell you one thing though, the drive up to the campsite in the daytime, I don't know if I would have done it if I saw it in the daytime, but it all worked out. And now we're hooked up and ready to go tomorrow morning. It looks like there's a lot of scratches on the car. I mean, they're a little bit, but that's mainly dirt on there and then the branches. So if you look here, if you wipe it away, there's no scratches. Obviously there's some micro scratches. The car's gonna need a buff after this. But so far, very happy and pleased with the, the expedition. It's definitely a family mobile. So I'm going to go inside, play some games with the kids, maybe have a coffee to warm up. I'll check back with you guys in the morning. All right guys, well hopefully you enjoyed some of that sand dudes footage. First thing to know is there is a main area where most tourists go see the sand dunes. And again, that was full of people and there was a lot of walking to get to the sand dunes. What I like to do is see where the crowds are going and go the complete opposite way and find my own adventure. So that's what having a 4x4 lifted vehicle does. I was able to take this trail down the road and find a parking spot right next to the dunes where nobody was and it was perfect. Now early on I addressed that my batteries were about 75%. One thing to keep in mind is when you travel solar and off the grid is you always have to be aware of what your batteries are at. Typically, I never get below 50% of battery, and normally that happens when it comes to a cloudy day after a sunny day. So two days of use, I'll use about 50% of the battery. Luckily on this trip, I didn't have more than two days of clouds, but if I did, that's why I installed that plug from my battery in my SUV all the way to the camper. So when I'm traveling to my next destination, it actually charges the batteries as well. So I will continuously talk about the solar power and the battery monitoring system throughout this series. So if you're interested, stick around. One thing you did see me use in the video was something called Speedflate. Now Speedflate is a product, one of many different products out there, that will help you with your tire pressure. So Speedflate is a product that lets you deflate your tires two at a time or four at a time. The one I have only does two at a time and inflate tires two at a time. Now there's a couple different reasons why you wanna deflate your tires when traveling off-road. Firstly, on-road, I travel with 70 PSI in my SUV. 
off-road I decreased the PSI down to 35 to 40 PSI. In the camper I do the same thing. I travel with 50 PSI on-road and down to 25 PSI off-road. Now let's go over the reasons why you want to air down your tires when going off-road. Reason one, when you air down your tire, your tire actually bulges out at the bottom giving you more surface area from the rubber on your tire to the actual dirt you're driving on. Now what that does is firstly, it increases the traction that you are getting from the surface. It also increases the surface area of your tire, meaning you won't sink into the ground as much as you would. For example, when I'm driving on that sand area, it bows out the tire, giving me more surface area so I don't sink into the sand and get stuck. Another thing it does is if you are driving over a sharp rock with high PSI in your tire, there's a higher probability of that rock puncturing your tire because there's so much pressure just on that little rock. So when you decrease the air in your tire, you're able to reduce the possibility of a puncture. Now, one of the best reasons to deflate your tires is the comfort in the vehicle and the abuse that your trailer will get. So when you decrease the air pressure in your tires, what it does is it gives another layer of suspension, if you will, between the ground and your camper or your car. So the ride inside the car when you're going over washboard roads will be much less bumpy. And then in the camper, again, it will be a much smoother ride in the camper, making sure your camper does not rattle apart and making sure things do not break. So you definitely want a way to deflate your tires so you can take advantage of all those benefits. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you deflate your tires, you need to inflate your tires. So I'll leave a link down below to the compressor I bring along so I can inflate my tires. Keep in mind, there are eight tires on my rig, so it does take about 30 to 45 minutes to fill up your tires. So what I tend to do is we would go through the area with deflated tires and then we'd stop for breakfast or lunch and my wife would get that ready while I inflate all the tires. Now guys, hopefully you like how this video turned out and this is how the rest of the series will be. I'll show you vlog style videos with the scenic area and then I'll come here in the camper and explain things to you in more detail. But guys, that's going to do it today. If you're interested in any of the products I used in this video, there is a link down below. Every time you purchase from those products, it does help me out. But guys, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm here to help you figure out how to get to these epic spots. But until next time, guys, I'll see you then.